Hey guys, it's Britt. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are making our homemade banana bread. This recipe is super easy, whole food plant-based, SOS free, and can be made gluten-free. So I have you all covered. We are loving banana bread, especially this time of year. I love it, especially pregnant. Um, but we just adore this. It just makes for the perfect like gift to give to as a thank you to people. It is the perfect thing to have on the weekends as a nice little brunch item. It's a perfect dessert to have ready to go. It also freezes wonderful. And you can make it so many different ways. So this recipe has been tested as a loaf. So we're gonna do that today as a traditional banana bread recipe. But you also can do it as muffins. You can make it as um, a bundt cake. Uh, so many different ways. The cook time is around the same. So just keep an eye on it. Always do the toothpick test to make sure it comes out nice and clean. But generally it's the same time, same temperature for all three of those different pans. And we've had lots of people love this. This recipe came out a long time ago inside our community page. And if you guys didn't know, we run a monthly community where we post the newest recipes we've been working on, plus our cooking classes and relaxing art classes all inside. I'll post some of the pictures of what's coming out this month, but it's a really great way to help support what we do and it helps us keep making videos like this. So thank you to everyone who is a member. So again, really easy. You can always customize this too. So we're going to do some chocolate chip banana bread today, but we do like walnut banana bread, plain. You can play around with whatever you have at home so it never gets boring. First up is to put all of the dry ingredients in a bowl. And now we have our printable PDF or Microsoft document on our website. You can just print this off and have it. It includes grams. So you can head down below or like I said to our website to grab that so you can print it off. But I'm gonna show you guys here. Um, we have one cup of whole wheat flour. Now you can also use a gluten-free flour of choice. It's totally up to you. Add that in. We have one cup of oat flour. Add that in as well. And that's just rolled oats, pulsed down to be a flour. We have two teaspoons of baking soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. Really easy to remember. We have a tablespoon of cinnamon. I'm gonna add in our date sugar. So this recipe I've tested multiple ways. So you can make it with two thirds cups of date sugar, which is granulated dehydrated dates, or you can use date paste. For the date paste, you want a half a cup. So depending on what you have, is this recipe works with the amount for date sugar, or like I said, the alternative of date paste and that other amount. It's all in the recipe, but I have tested. It doesn't always work with whatever you have on hand, but this one's been so popular, I made sure to test out both ways. And then last up for the dry ingredients, we have about half of a teaspoon of vanilla powder. Really easy. So this is all of our dry ingredients. We're just gonna give that a little mix. Incorporate it really well. Super easy. If you have little ones, I always say get them involved in the kitchen, have them help you stir, add things, get excited about the recipes. With our little guy coming this spring, <laughs> I'm already planning for him to love cooking, hopefully. Um, but he will surely be in the kitchen with me, helping me, I'm sure, make lots of banana bread in our future. So really looking forward to having a little partner uh, whenever I'm cooking. All right, so that's all tossed together. Now the next part is all of our wet ingredients. So I did set this aside a couple minutes before I started the video. So about 10 minutes or so, let your flax eggs gel up. Now when I mean a flax egg, a lot of you guys already know this, but it's just flax meal and water that you let sit and it becomes a nice gelatinous egg replacement. So we have two flax eggs here. So it's two tablespoons of, of flax meal with six tablespoons of water. And you just let it sit, it gets nice and thick, and that's gonna be what we use for our egg replacement. 
We have one cup of a plant milk unsweetened, unflavored. And then of course, we have some bananas. So I'm gonna grab a little bowl to mash up our bananas. Um, you also, you know, could just mash it in by hand and have a little bit of it on the chunkier side. It's personal preference. Um, today I actually grabbed four bananas because I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do to decorate the top. So if you have an extra banana, you can save that for how we're gonna decorate it today. But three large bananas are perfect. And I personally like them to be nice and spotty. That means they're naturally sweeter. So make sure that they have lots of little brown spots for best results. It's nature's candy, really, when everything becomes nice and sweet. So we wanna make sure they're not on the green side, for sure. All right, let me grab a bowl. We'll bash up the bananas and we're almost ready to go. Three large bananas go into this recipe. So I'm just gonna peel them. Really easy, again, look for the spotty kinds. Also, if they're a little bit brown on the inside, it's totally okay, because we're gonna bake them. All right, these look great. So my three bananas are in my bowl. Now you could just mash it into your batter. You no need to dirty another dish. Um, some people like it really fine. Some people like chunks of bananas in their banana bread. Personal preference. I'm just gonna take a couple minutes. You can also do this with a fork, but just mash this up and then we're gonna add them. Again, really a nice time for you to get your kids or your grandkids in here and give them this kind of like fun job to do. Also, if they're on the right side, it's really easy to mash. All right, so that is ready to go. Only took a couple seconds. We're gonna fold everything into our batter now. And then it's optional again for anything extra you wanna add. So I do have some dark chocolate chips. They're one ingredient, they're the Santa Barbara ones, our favorite that we're gonna add today. But again, we've done walnuts, we've done different kinds of nuts, I've done it plain. You can play around with whatever you'd like. Banana bread is customizable. So good. So those three bananas mashed one in. We're gonna add in our two flax eggs that have been sitting here. And you can see right now it gets nice and goopy. That's what we're looking for. And then our one cup of plant milk that's unsweetened and unflavored. It can be any plant milk that you like. And we're gonna spend a moment, mix everything in. And then again, you can use this in so many different ways. This can go in a loaf pan, like traditional. Um, this makes a pretty big loaf, which I love. Um, it's very substantial and impressive when you go to take it out of your pan. Um, but it also can be enough to put in a silicone bunt pan or even a muffin pan. So we love, we love the silicone baking pans here. And we have a bunch linked on our Amazon that we have. Um, and it works great. So again, don't feel shy. You can make these into muffins. You can make these into a cake. This can just be a traditional loaf. Really, really easy. You can preheat your oven to 350 degrees as well. And I'm just going through the bottom, really making sure all that flour is incorporated. Comes such a nice batter. Should already start smelling amazing. And this is my favorite way to do a thank you gift. So if someone does something, you know, really thoughtful for you, consider dropping off some banana bread for them. We've done it over the years with lots of situations and uh, it's always a hit. It's easy, homemade, healthy, tastes so good. Okay, that's ready to go. 
Now you can add in any of your optional ingredients at this point too. I like to add in the chocolate chips and fold them in so that it'll melt kind of evenly. You can add them on top. Walnuts go great again. Whatever you'd like. Personal preference on how much you add. Generally I do around two handfuls. Two, one to two handfuls. And that's good. And then I'm just gonna mix those in. All right, perfect. Now, there is another trick I'm gonna show you guys. Now, some people know this. Some people are like, I've never seen that before. Um, and I like to do this on top of my banana breads, especially when I'm gonna deliver them, you know, or serve it and it looks a little bit fancier. So I take one of the ripe bananas, so this was number four that I just had. This is optional, you don't have to do this, but chocolate chips look nice on top too. Take the peel off. And then I like to slice it in half. I forget where I saw this done first. It probably was a cooking show on TV. Or I, I personally love like the morning, any of like the morning TV stations and anything they do with cooking. Um, and try to cut it, sometimes if it's ripe, we can kind of break, but cut it in half. So you have down lengthwise. So you have two pieces. It kind of looks, you know, similar to what you do for a banana split. All right, we're gonna put that on top and bake it. And it bakes up and it just is so pretty on top. So that's optional. It just makes it a little bit fancier. We, we tend to do it. So I'm gonna scoop all this in to my silicone loaf pan carefully. <laughs> Try to get it in as even as possible. And again, remember this can be muffins. It freezes really great. So if it's only you at home or you want to, you know, have some and have some for a later date, you can bake this up and freeze it. We always sometimes have muffins in our freezer and I'm sure postpartum I'm gonna be doing this a lot more with our freezer, but it freezes up wonderful as well. And it's one of those really nice things that you can have in the freezer and then pull out when you have company, similar to like the chocolate chip cookie <laughs> trick. I just love having something already pre-made, so simple and easy. And then if you have a get together, you know, you don't have to worry about having it or being in the kitchen. Although it doesn't take long to whip up if you need it in a pinch. After it's even in your silicone pan, again, you can do chocolate chips or walnuts or leave it plain, it's up to you. But I like to position these guys that I've cut. And then I like to just give them a nice like little gently press down into the batter. And so you can play around with how you want them to be like displayed. Like sometimes I do one a little bit up farther and this guy scooched down. It's kind of a cool, cool design. And then just pat them into the batter, just gently secure them and it's ready to go. And when this bakes, it'll be really beautiful. It's definitely like aesthetically pleasing on top. Something different you maybe haven't tried. So I hope you guys will love this. This guy's bakes for 35 minutes in the oven at 350, really easy. Do the toothpick test, make sure it's done, middle rack. And I will see you guys when it comes out. Your whole house is gonna smell lovely and I can't wait to hear how you guys like it. So I'll see you guys in around 35 minutes. And there you guys have it, a beautiful banana bread loaf. It is such a nice substantial loaf, which I love about this recipe. And you can make the top however you'd like. You can keep the bananas flipped with the inside facing up or vice versa. I think it makes it a little bit more rustic and homemade looking, which is what I want my 
people I give it to to know that it's made with a lot of love and care and I think it just makes it look so fun. So I hope you guys will give this a try. Let it cool completely before removing it from the pan. If you do have a Breville Smart Oven Air, uh, I would suggest cooking this for around 35 minutes and checking with the toothpick test. If you have a standard oven, it can take you know closer to 40 or even 45 minutes, it just depends. So always the toothpick test is the best way with baked goods to make sure the center is cooked completely. But I know you guys are gonna love this and be sure to check out everything else on our channel. We have hundreds of recipes. We also have all the recipes in our community that eventually come out over a really long time to the channel. Um, so you wanna be a member so you don't miss anything and it's really, a great way to join our cooking classes and you get everything right up front. Like I said, this recipe came out years ago over there and you want the new stuff now. All right, I will see you guys soon. Print off the recipe and let me know how you like it. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.